Um, I welcome everyone from Zion and also from Grace Lutheran in Red Lion and from wherever else you may be. Thanks for joining us this morning. The only announcement I have this morning is that um, we will be having communion this morning. And so if you have a cracker or a small piece of bread and grape juice or wine or water or something to drink, I invite you to take communion with those of us who are here in the sanctuary as we celebrate it. But also there will be drive up communion in Zion's parking lot after the service. And you are welcome to come and receive the elements at that time. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. John the Baptist calls all people to prepare the Lord's way, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Baptize us with the fire of your spirit, that we may be a light shining in the darkness, welcoming others as Christ has welcomed us. For he is our light and salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. 
Well, today is December 6th. Do any of you know whose feast day is today? If you do, tell the grown up in the room. And if you don't, I'll tell you. It's St. Nicholas, the feast day of St. Nicholas. Now, St. Nicholas lived a long, 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 long time ago, not too long after Jesus was alive. And he lived in a place called Myrna in Asia Minor. You can ask a grown up to help you find that on a map. Today, we call that place Turkey. I know, it's not a bird, it's a place. But he lived in Myrna and he grew up, he had a rich family, but he became an orphan when he was very little. And so he had a lot of money that he never used. And so he decided that he would give all that money to people who needed it because he did not need it because he was a priest and a man of God and he was taken care of in other ways. And he loved God's people. He especially loved children. So one of the things that he used to do was take little bags and fill it with gold coins and walk around his town and throw the bags of money into people's windows. So that people would be sure to have enough to eat and warm clothes to wear. One time, he even took a bag of money and threw it up onto somebody's roof and it went in their chimney and down the chimney and into the house. What a great shot, huh? Mm -hmm. What a great shot. He was a good and wonderful man, and he's a wonderful example of how all of us can follow Jesus by sharing the things that we have with other people. So sometime today, maybe over dinner, maybe another time, you can talk with the grown-ups in your family about how you might share some of the things that you have with people who need them. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for St. Nicholas, for the ways that he teaches us to share and take care of other people. And we ask, Lord, that you fill our hearts so that we may be inspired to take care of others as well. Amen. Thank you for listening. I'll see you again next week. And now we'll transfer over here. The first lesson of the day comes from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term that her penalty is paid, that she is received from the Lord's hand, double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain of Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arms rules for that for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right.
The second letter comes from 2 Peter, chapter 3. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. For the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of per persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sent my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming Baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he also ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. 
and I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our creator and redeemer. Amen. So my question for you this morning is, have you ever been lost? Maybe in a grocery store, the mall, or a really big shopping place? Are you ever being like really truly lost somewhere out in the wilderness? Do you remember that heart stopping, gut wrenching fear that just grips you and won't let go? It doesn't really matter if you're in a store full of people or somewhere out alone in the wilderness, that feeling of isolation and fear is the same and it can be terrifying. I will tell you that I was lost once, um, really lost all by myself. I was probably eight. Uh, we had behind my house a, a wooded area that was probably about 100 acres. And we would go back there all the time and ride our bikes and follow the trails and play fort and I don't, we did all kinds of stuff. Um, and one day I decided to go on an explore in the woods all by myself because clearly I was big at eight years old. Um, and remember, this was back in the 70s. And so in the 70s, for those of you who are not that old, you would leave the house after breakfast and nobody expected to see you again until dinner time. Like that was kind of it. That was <laughs> so I went out, I was going on my explorer. I was not gone 10 minutes before I figured out that I was so lost that I had no clue where I was. And I must have wandered around those woods for hours trying to find my way home. And I was terrified. I did make it home, obviously, I'm here. Um, what happened was that I eventually walked so far in the wrong direction that I came to the pasture on the other side of the wood. And I knew where that was. So I followed the fence till I found a trail and then took the trail back home. Um, but that moss only grows on the north side of trees thing, that's not always true, just for the record. Not always true. But there are all kinds of wilderness. There is geographical wilderness, like I just talked about. There is political and societal wilderness. And I dare say that many of us feel like we are wandering somewhere in that kind of wilderness almost every day these days. No matter where you fall on the political spectrum, it's lonely out there. But the wilderness that I want to focus on today is the wilderness of our own lives, because I feel like that's the hardest one, at least for me, it's definitely the hardest one. The others are more easily resolved or avoided, but in your own life, in your own heart that can be the loneliest place of all and there's no getting away from it when things are going badly or you're in mourning over someone or something your heart can be desolate and it's always right there with you at some time or another most of us have been lost in this way Maybe because we don't read the map, get the information ahead of time, get educated about different things so that we kind of know what's coming. But maybe we don't even have a map of the landscape that we find ourselves in. Either way, we just think that we can navigate a situation on our own. And then when we're out there, out there in the middle of it, we are not as strong or brave or resilient enough to journey through that inner wilderness on our own. 
So what is your personal wilderness? Usually it's a little different for everybody, even people in the same family. It could be your health, worry over a loved one, unfinished business from the past, things that are coming up, whatever it is, you can recognize it because it leaves you feeling vulnerable and alone and a little lost. Oftentimes we try to avoid it and the feelings that it brings out. We either ignore the problem or try to change things until it just kind of goes away. But it's important to realize that wilderness times in our lives, in our hearts, they won't go away until we address them, until we bring them into the light, bring them before the Lord. Without God, we'll just keep getting lost one way or another. It is in these wilderness moments that this particular gospel from today is especially meaningful. So let's take a look at the text. The opening of the Gospel of Mark is different from Matthew, Luke, or John, because it starts out by proclaiming that this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then the very next words are from the prophet Isaiah from the Old Testament. He lived approximately 600 years before the birth of Christ. Isaiah's words for themselves are both a memory and a promise for the future. These opening lines remind us that God was there for the Israelites in the hunger and despair of the Sinai Peninsula when they were escaping from Egypt. God was there when the Babylonians conquered their land and sent them into exile. God was there for the Jewish people in the midst of the oppression of the Roman occupation during the life of Jesus. And now John the baptizer picks up the promise proclaiming a baptism of repentance and forgiveness of sins and pointing towards someone who is greater than him. By weaving in that prophecy of Isaiah, Mark's account artfully links together the entirety of the history of human experience with God. Mark's writing reinforces the constancy of God. The Lord's devotion to his people has never changed, right? All throughout history, no matter the circumstances, God has loved and been with his people. When the Israelites heard the prophecy of Isaiah and listened to the teachings of John the baptizer, they remembered the history of their people and how God often lifted up kings and warriors in times of great need. And because of that, they were expecting a mighty ruler to come. They were looking for a conventional earthly king, one who would empower them to fight off the shackles of oppression and reclaim their ancient lands. They expected their savior to ride in on a cloud of righteousness, claiming a military victory. And what they got was Jesus. What they got was the complete opposite of what they expected. Jesus was a man who came out into the wilderness to hear the teachings of John the baptizer he was a man who preached forgiveness, tolerance, and peace as a way of life. Jesus was not at all what anyone was expecting. Instead of raising an army, Jesus went to the people in the wilderness, in the outskirts of the land and society. He talked with women, healed lepers, and ate with tax collectors. He lived on the edge of society. He taught and healed those who lived in any sort of wilderness, no matter if it was physical or societal or spiritual. 
Jesus continued God's pattern of coming to his people exactly where they needed him most. God is with us, not just in Jerusalem, in the heart of the temple, living in the heart of plenty where psalms are read and coins ring in the offering plate. Jesus is not only with us in the midst of our abundance when we are filling our obligations to God. God does not only make himself known in the happy places of our lives when things are going well and it's easy to see the blessings. Instead, God shows God's self to be a God of mercy and grace, a God who comes to us wherever we are, even if it's ugly, especially if it's ugly. Today, we hear good news indeed, because God has never abandoned his people, and God will never abandon us whether we are wandering in the wilderness because of financial worries or in the desert of a health crisis or in the depths of grief, Jesus makes himself known to us right in the middle of it all. He comes to lend us courage, strength, and peace we need. He gives us whatever we need to support us and he grants us his grace so that we can finally make our way out of whatever we are stuck in. He comes to us wherever we are and walks with us. And sometimes when we need it, he picks us up and carries us until we are clear of the thickets and our path is straight again. Jesus shows us how to live in gratitude to him. Loving us into the land of milk and honey where sins are forgiven and we are truly living once again. Amen. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Our doubts and questions, nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We pray especially for all those who are being evicted, for those who are homeless, for those who have lost their jobs. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth, make even disparities between your people, sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities, accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. Pray for those in our families and congregations who are not joyful in this holiday season. Craig Hoover, Leo Andraconis, Jerry Thomason, Shirley Fink, Tom Burdos, Lindsay Wagner, Cal Hills, Russ Coral, Alvi Fetzer, Carol Fetzer, Pastor Ben, Courtney, Alice Ann, and Charlie. Pastor Ruth, Joel Ellis, Christine Bush, Dulcy Whitcraft, Ron and Gloria Jean Scheibel, Melissa Aunt Landis, Christine Landis, Howard Rogers. Comfort those who grieve, be a companion to all who are lonely, tend those who are sick or struggling with depression, and gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. We especially remember Nicholas of Myra, Carol Andrews, Russi, and Kenneth Wedding. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us shout, share with one another a sign of God's peace. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our forces with angels and archangels and with all the company forever praising you and saying,
You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is, the body. this is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given and shed for you.
upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>